Hey guys, Thing Fishy here again with part four of my Elden Ring parry guide. And for this one, we have a showdown between the four parry Ashes of War. Stormwall, Thops Barrier, Golden Parry, and Carian Retaliation. Now, before we get started, I want to clarify a couple of things. First of all, these Ashes of War overwrite the default parry of any shield they can be fitted to. So you'll see me using these Ashes of War on both medium and small shields today. But the shield it's fitted to makes no difference to its overall performance. Secondly, these four Ashes of War all have very different abilities and benefits alongside their standard parrying function. And I will be making videos on all four in the future to show you their full potential when they are used as intended. But for today, all I'm interested in is their usability as conventional parry tools, parrying physical attacks up close to enemies. And finally, this will likely be the last video of me testing these tools purely based on how they feel to me. I've said since part one that I'd like to do a video analyzing the frame data of all of these tools once I've had a chance to try them and try and work it out for myself. And that's likely what I'm gonna be doing in part five. So with all that out of the way, let's get to it. First up, we have Stormwall. And as anyone who's watched my last couple of videos will know, Stormwall is pretty good. To me, this is an Ash of War that replaces any shield's parry with a small shield parry. Very consistent, just lacking that super quick start up that you get with the Buckler's parry frames. And for a parry tool that you can get three minutes into the game on any character, this is such a solid parrying choice for any build. The only downside here is like the golden parry, using this parry Ash of War does consume your FP. Next up we have Thop's Barrier. So as a pure parry tool, I can't feel any difference between this and Stormwall. Again, super consistent, just missing that buckler start up for those very quick attacks. Now, since you can get Stormwall in Limgrave and Thop's Barrier requires you to have beaten the Red Wolf of Radagon and taken a trip across the rather dangerous rooftops in Rhea Lucaria, it's hard to recommend this over Stormwall as a pure parry tool. But I'll be interested to see what the full abilities of this Ash of War are when used as intended to parry incantations and spells. Now for Karian Retaliation. So how is it? Well, it's pretty simple. If there is a difference between this Ash of War and the Buckler Parry, it's not something I can feel, and not something I'll be able to find parrying either Margit or our Church of Elatess Soldier. The very first time I tested this on Margit, I hit 100% of the parries that I attempted. And if you wanna see exactly how many that was, stick around for a moment, because I'm gonna come back to that. But this kind of consistency is exactly what I would expect from the Buckler Barry. So here we have it, the holy grail of parrying. This is a 100% physical damage reduction shield with a parry as good as a buckler. I've been using this skill on my parry character and the way that you can use guard counters and parries side by side with literally no downsides really does transport me back to DS1 and make certain boss fights in Elden Ring so much easier than they would otherwise be. Karian Retaliation on a medium shield is objectively the best parry tool I have tested in this series. And now finally, the parry tool that's probably been spoken the most about in the comment section of all of these videos, the golden parry. Now, I wasn't very complimentary about this tool in part three, and so many of you have been in touch to let me know how this tool is making your playthroughs easier. And this has definitely made me want to revisit this tool and use more of its abilities in more specific ways like parrying magical attacks and multiple enemies. And I will do that in the future. But today we are interested solely in its standard parrying ability. And I'm afraid it's bad news once again. Now, for those of you who think that I might be making this up, 
or deliberately being a bit contrarian just to start up conversation, with Kari and Retaliation, on my first attempt using it, I parried Margit 65 times in a row without a single failed attempt. After five minutes or so, Margit eventually got me with his little magic dagger and I respawned back at the nearby stake of Marika. Equipped the golden parry and was back in the fight 30 seconds later. And I immediately started missing parries. After 65 perfect parries with Kari in retaliation, I missed my first parry on the third attempt with golden parry. And I continued to miss with it. So much so that Margit actually killed me pretty quickly, after 5 minutes of not being able to touch me once. I'll leave a link in the description down below so you can watch the full Karian Retaliation test straight into this Golden Parry test for yourselves in real time. Now, the Golden Parry isn't a bad parry tool. I think across all of my testing, in both videos, I'd say I probably hit about 80% of the parries with it, which isn't bad at all. But unlike every other tool in the game, that 20% that I don't hit with the golden parry, I never know what I really did wrong. When I'm parrying with curved swords or the thrusting swords, which we know from my previous tests have a smaller window, I will fail a parry attempt and immediately know what I did wrong. Ah, that one was too early. No, that one was too late. With the golden parry though, I just kind of sit there shaking my head thinking, that felt good, why didn't I get it? And for me, this almost writes off this Ash of War completely. When I'm fighting late game boss that I won't spoil for you, but they're at 5% health, and I'm one parry away from finishing the fight, the very last thing that I want equipped at that point is any tool that feels like it sometimes fails for no reason. Now I'm still so confused about this parry tool, and I still could be wrong about it. I've actually seen a few of you posting parry frame data in my comment sections that give it the same frames as the buckler. But from testing it multiple times now, I just can't see how that could be the case. Unless, as ever, I'm missing something. And that's it for part 4 of my Elden Ring parry guide. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I hope you found this video useful. Take care guys, see you soon.